Welcome back to We Are Reading Virtual Storytime for the week of February 1st, 2021. February 22nd is Groundhog Day, so we'll be reading Groundhog Weather School by Joan Haloub, and we'll be making our very own weather wheels. Enjoy your story time! Groundhog Weather School by Joan Haloub, illustrated by Kristen Sora. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. I do not see my shadow. That means spring is here. Yahoo! Spring is here. Sun and fun, here I come. <sighs> I guess it's really hard to predict the weather. Dear Weather Groundhog, you were wrong. Spring is not here yet. Maybe you are too far away to predict the weather everywhere. Could you get more groundhogs to help you next year? Signed, Rabbit. Hmm, Rabbit's right. I do need help. But how will I find enough other groundhogs to help me predict the weather all over North America? Have you got what it takes to be a weather forecaster? Take this quiz and check all that apply. Are you a mammal? Are you furry? Do you live in a burrow? Are you a rodent? Are you an herbivore? Do you hibernate? If you checked all six boxes, you're invited to attend Groundhog Weather School. The news travels fast. Check. No, 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 no. Check. Check. Nah, -uh, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, nah, -uh. Check. 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 Nope. 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 No fair. I bet a skunk could forecast the weather, too. Check, 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 check. Rats, rats. Chuck, 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 chuck. Hibernate, darn. Check, 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 check. Yay, I'm heading for a Groundhog Weather School. Welcome to your first day at Groundhog Weather School, class. Let's begin by saying the pledge... The Pledge of Hog Allegiance. We, the students of Groundhog Weather School, pledge to come out of our burrows on February 2nd to look for our shadows and to remember that if we don't see our shadows, it means spring is here. If we do see our shadows, it means there will be six more weeks of winter. I see my shadow when it's sunny. But why would it be sunny weather mean more cold weather is coming? I don't get it. It says here that a sunny winter day may be extra cold because there's no cloud blanket to trap the sun's warmth near the ground. Shadows? No one said anything about shadows. Dark, creepy shadows. Cool hair, dude. But are you sure you're a groundhog? Um, I'm a foreign exchange student. Groundhog minus shadow equals spring. Groundhog plus shadow equals winter. Will that be on the test? Geography. Class, please tell us about yourselves. We are the only animals with a holiday named after ourselves. Aren't you forgetting Turkey Day? We watch out for these predators. My eyes, ears, and nose are good danger detectors. If a predator is near, I run for my burrow. If I can't run fast, I only run about 10 miles per hour. Most of us live in areas that get very cold in winter, like the northeast central part of the United States and Canada. Groundhog Day began here in Pennsylvania. We dig holes and eat crops. We do some states that don't even allow groundhogs, except for graduates of Groundhog Weather School, of course. Like most of the groundhogs in northeastern United States, I prefer to be called a woodchuck. In the Appalachian Mountains, groundhogs are called whistle pigs because we whistle to warn other groundhogs of danger. Squirrels, chipmunks, and prairie dogs are our relatives. We are all part of a big rodent family called marmots. Gee, my name is Groundhog. I'm smaller than a beaver, but quicker than a squirrel. I weigh about 10 pounds. Well done, class. Now we'll visit the library. Research reports are due on the next page. 
famous furry hognosticators. Punxsutawney Phil, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, made his first weather prediction in 1886, met U.S. President Ronald Reagan, starred in a movie called Groundhog Day. General Beauregard Lee Lilburn, Georgia, lives in a small white house at the Yellow River Game Ranch, has been on the Today Show and the Animal Planet, has an honorary college degree. We are to Willie, we are to Ontario, Canada. A rare white albino groundhog with pink eyes tries to predict which football team will win the Super Bowl, gets visitors as far away as Pakistan. Jimmy the Groundhog, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, is visited by as many as 500 people each Groundhog Day, has a weather hotline, and visits Wisconsin schools. Buckeye Chuck, Marion, Ohio, the official Ohio State Groundhog, lives in a comfy straw line box in a park, visits a radio station on Groundhog Day to give his weather forecast. Staten Island Chuck, Staten Island, New York, has a house with a thermometer in the roof, lives at the Staten Island Zoo. Ice statues of him are carved on February 2nd. Pierre C. Shadow, New Iberia, Louisiana, is really a nutria, a rodent with webbed feet and a long tail that lives in marshlands or swamps, has a Cajun-style house, which is moved to the Bellini Plaza Park each year for a big Groundhog Day celebration. Sir Walter Wally, Raleigh, North Carolina, and the week before Groundhog Day, kids record their weather observations when the mayor announces Wally's weather forecast at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences kids watch to see if Wally's predictions turn out to be right. Nature's Weather Predictors Some plants and animals can help predict weather. A tree's leaves can predict storms. Leaves curl upward so the underside shows that there's moisture in the air and a strong wind is blowing. Achoo! Cows don't like wind blowing in their faces so they stand with their backsides to the wind. Winds blowing from the west usually bring good weather. So if a cow's tail is turned toward the west, it often means the good weather is coming. Meow. Meow to you too. Wet honeybees are too heavy to fly. They stay near their hive when rain is coming. If a pine cove's leaves fold inward, it may rain. In dry weather, they fold outward. Impressive. Weather men. Luke Howard created a system for classifying and naming different cloud shapes. It includes cumulus, cirrus, and stratus clouds. Wilson Snowflake Bentley was a farmer in Vermont who took thousands of pictures of individual snowflakes. This helped scientists understand how snowflakes form. Evangelista Torricelli invented the barometer, which measures air pressure. If air is not pressing hard against the earth, it's called a low pressure system. That often means it will rain. Can you guess what a high pressure system means? Professor Theodore Fujita was nicknamed Mr. Tornado because he helped figure out how to measure and the wind inside a tornado. Lunchtime, everyone. Be sure you hog out. It's important to add as much fat to our bodies as we can before hibernation begins. Why do we have to hibernate in the winter? Yeah, I'm not sleepy. We hibernate for four or five months between October and March because it's cold and food is hard to find. During hibernation, we are in a deep sleep. Our heartbeat slows down, our body temperature drops, and we only breathe about once every four minutes. We don't need to eat because we live off the fat our bodies have stored up. So eat up, groundhogs. My frog hibernates at the bottom of a stream where the water doesn't freeze. My friend Bat hibernates in a cave with wings tucked close to keep her warm. How to build a burrow. One, dig a hole in the ground to make your front door. Two, keep digging. Chomp through any roots. This will help wear down your claws and teeth so they don't grow too long. Three, we can only dig about five feet in one day. But if you want a simple burrow, dig about 15 feet of tunnel. You'll want a fancy one, you can dig up to 40 feet. 4. Make a few rooms along the way, such as a bedroom, a bathroom, and a storeroom for snacks. 
And five, be sure to make a back door in case you need to make a quick escape. The reasons for seasons. We have a surprise for you, Professor. A skit about seasons. In North America, a year is divided into four seasons of three months each. The seasons are winter, spring, summer, and fall. I'm winter. I begin around December 21st at the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. I'm spring. I begin around March 21st at the spring equinox, when day and night are the same length. I'm summer. I begin around June 21st at the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year. I'm fall. I begin around September 21st at the fall equinox, when day and night are the same length. There are two reasons for seasons. Planet Earth orbits goes around the sun, and the Earth is tilted. The equator is an imaginary line that divides Earth into two halves called hemispheres. When a hemisphere tilts toward the sun, it's warmer, as in summer. When it tilts away, it's colder, as in winter. Wonderful! I'm so proud of you. Shadow Studies On February 2nd, we will look for our shadows. Can anyone tell me what a shadow is? A dark, scary monster that chases me? I know, it's the shade that made, that's made when something blocks out the light, right? If there's a solar eclipse on Groundhog Day, do we get a do-over? Move far, far from the light to make a small shadow. Come closer to the light to make a big shadow. At night, there are no shadows because there's no sunlight. Who's hugging my flashlight? Excellent. I think you're all ready for the final exam. The big test, a multiple choice quiz. Please circle the correct answer for each question. One, what day do you come out of your burrow? Two, what do you look for when you come out? Three, if you see it, see answer to number two. What does it mean? Four, if you don't see it, what does it mean? Five, whether you see it or not, what's the next thing to do? That's one big test. Yay, I passed. Me too, I'm going to New York to check the weather. I got Florida, what a cinch, it'll be spring for sure. Yahoo, I'll be doing Texas. Get to your postgraduates and start hibernating. Remember to set your alarm clocks for February 2nd. We'll be awaiting your shadow reports. <sighs> Wake up, it's Groundhog Day! <sighs> at last! It's February 2nd at school headquarters. Weather reports are coming in from every Groundhog Weather School graduate. Will there be more winter, or is it time for a scream? Hello, Groundhog Weather School here. Does seeing the shadow and lightning count? Sh 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 shadow What's your report? A chew No shadow I see a dog, does that count? Yep, that's a skunk shadow you're seeing folks. Shh My shadow is divine. I wish you could see it. I see a fog, but no shadow. How can I see my shadow without my glasses? The results are in. I'll rush them over to the professor. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. I had some help this year from the graduates of Groundhog Weather School. Most of us saw our shadows, including me, so it's a sure bet that winter will last for six more weeks. Professor Groundhog took my advice and got some help. He's sure to be right this time. I'm going sledding. <sighs> I guess it's really, really hard to predict the weather. How did Groundhog Day get started? Long ago, farmers in Europe watched for badgers and bears to wake up from hibernation, hoping this indicated that winter had ended. If spring was coming, it would be safe to plant crops without worrying they might freeze. When these farmers settled in Pennsylvania and set in the 1700s, there were a lot of groundhogs around, so the farmers began watching them wake up instead. But why choose February 2nd? Ancient Romans and other past civilizations could hardly wait for warm spring weather to arrive. February 2nd comes about halfway between the shortest day of the year, December 21st, 
and the beginning of spring, March 21st, so it was a good day to celebrate the coming season. In North America, these February 2nd celebrations became Groundhog Day. Who's better at predicting the weather, a groundhog or you? Groundhog weather prediction are only right about one third of the time, but it's fun to celebrate Groundhog Day and watch for winter to eventually turn into spring. This February 2nd, do you hope spring will come right away or do you hope for winter to last longer? Which do you think will happen? Write it down and see if your prediction comes true. The end. Okay, to make our weather wheel, you'll need a weather wheel. Um, I got these little kits from Oriental Trading, um, but you can make this yourself if you really had the patience. Um, but this luckily came with a nice little kit. It looks like this. And then what we're gonna do is um, open it. Um, you have like the underneath wheel, the big wheel, and the littler wheel. You have a white brad um, or metal fastener. I have um, a ruler and I'll show you why. First thing we want to do when we unpack it, just kind of, we'll organize it in a minute. But if you notice, it says to go by the picture. And one of the things is lightning. We have this yellow for lightning. So I thought the easiest way to make lightning would be to go back and forth across the um, ruler like this. Just keep going back and forth. That way it's kind of even and um, it's nice and sharp. Not sharp, sharp, but sharp curves, whatever. <laughs> um, so you should do that. And then you shouldn't really need any kind of glue or anything for this. It's supposed to stick to the double stick um, clouds. So the first thing I'm going to do, now that I've done that, and then this is for the wind. Apparently the wind it blows it's supposed to make a cute little thing and it curves up so I'm just gonna use my finger for that to make it curl up Try to make it a little rounder. apparently my fingers not that round so I don't know why you get two but um, yeah so that's that so we're gonna have it like this. I'll just do it like, I'm gonna make it like this so it's like really windy, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, what we're gonna do, the first thing, the first step is to take the metal brad, you poke it through the top one, and while you're holding that, you're gonna poke it through the bottom one. Oops, don't lose it. Might be easier to poke it through first, get the little, Piece of cardboard out of there, line them up, and then it'll go right through both of them. There it is, lined up. And I'm just going to drop the brad through, flip it over. And you don't want it too tight because you want the wheel to be able to turn. So I can change today's weather is snowy, today's weather is sunny. So the next thing I'm going to do is unpack it and put everything by where it should be. Okay, I've got that all straightened out. Um, for rainy stormy, we have the gray for the on the cloud, the raindrops and the lightning. For cloudy, we have the fluffies to put on the cloud. For windy, we have our little air jets. Snowy, we have little snowflakes. For sunny, we have a sun face and this. So um, all we're gonna do is peel them and stick them to where they belong. Um, 
we'll do the first few of them like this. Um, here's the sunshine. Very happy. And I'm going to carefully pull this. And this is great for a fine motor if you can get the kids to kind of try to help feel them. Um, some of them will come off more easily than others. As you can see, this is staying a little bit to the edges. Um, and again, I got these kits from Oriental Trading. Um, just because with the bulk of what we do, I make 35 kits a week, plus one for me to show you what to do. So that's a lot of little parts. So we'll put the sunshine right there. Um, the next easiest one is snowflakes. Just peel those off. You can get the paper off while you're peeling it. And then it's up to you if you want this little dot in the middle. Um, stick that there. We get three of them. kids pull them off you might want to start them because sometimes they're a little hard to get going this one's coming off nicely one two three three little snowflakes okay wendy again i just kind of have these i don't know why there's two of them um, there's only one side I stick on these. And peel it. I put it under there like a. Oop, I don't want it to cover the windy sign. A little bit lower. Yeah. See, everyone makes mistakes, especially me. Okay, now the cloudy. I'm just gonna put the little cloud on. This is a double stick cloud, um, which is much easier to deal with than trying to glue everything. But again, if you don't have a kit, you can make your own and glue it. So I'll stick that there, and we'll pull the second paper off. And then we're just gonna stick our little. little pom-poms on there to make it a nice fluffy cloud. If they don't all fit right, you can kind of move them a tiny bit and squish them some. So that's cloudy. And the last one is stormy rainy. Now the big thing is double stick cloud again. Um, I'm going to take the back off. And when we go to stick that down, remember we have to have the lightning in there. So I'm going to have it off to this side. And then get the little papers off of there. Also gave you little raindrops. These are going to be the hardest to stick on because they're so tiny. But I'm making it work. And this is our weather wheel. Um, 
pretty simple to the point. And since we had a long story, it was nice to have a simple craft. Um, and then you just ask your child, what kind of day are we having today? And they can say, oof, it's snowy. Or, oh no, here comes the rain. It's nice and sunny today. It's cold, but sunny. Um, and you can also use this as a predictor. Um, for some reason, on the back, they also say today's weather is. But um, you could probably wipe that out and say, I predict the weather will be. Um, and have them guess the night before. But this is it. This is our weather wheel. Well, that's all for today. We'll see you next week on We're Reading Virtual Storytime.